Question Sand Answer Sonentai Thrombotic Therapy and Revascularization Strategies in Non-ST Elevation Acute Coronary Syndrome NSTEACS Accompanion Document of 2020 ESC Guidelines for the Management of Acute Coronary Syndromes in Patients Presenting Without Persistent ST Segment Elevation. Antiplatelet Therapy Question 1. A 70-year-old female patient with ongoing and severe chest pain is admitted to the chest pain unit at 4 a.m. with a deep, greater than 3.0 mm, ST depression in the anterior leads and apical akinesia on echocardiography. She received aspirin, 250 mg intravenous, IV, and parenteral anticoagulation. 5,000 IU unfractionated heparin UFH in the ambulance. The resident from the emergency room calls to inform you that the patient is still not pain-free and ST depression is now 1 mm. He would like to pre-treat this patient with 180 mg of ticagrelor? What is your advice as the interventional cardiologist on call? This female patient should be scheduled for immediate invasive treatment with coronary angiography, and it is not recommended to administer routine pretreatment with AP2Y12 receptor inhibitor in patients in whom coronary anatomy is not known and an immediate invasive management is planned. Thus, any further antiplatelet treatment including a loading dose of either prosugral 60 mg or ticagrelor 180 mg can be given after diagnostic angiography and before percutaneous coronary intervention, PCI, section 5.1.1.2, figure 7. Question 2. Why should we not consider a routine pretreatment for all biomarker positive patients with suspected non ST elevation acute coronary syndrome, NSTEACS, and a planned coronary angiography? Because it may be deleterious for a relevant proportion of patients with diagnoses other than NSTEACS, for example, aortic dissection bleeding complications including intracranial bleeding, and may increase bleeding risk or delay procedures in patients scheduled for coronary artery bypass grafting CAB, after diagnostic angiography. A randomized trial showed no benefit of a pretreatment with prosugral compared with administration of the drug at the time of PCI, and specific randomized data are lacking for ticagrelor in NSTEACS patients. A pretreatment regimen with AP2Y12 receptor inhibitor may only be considered in patients with high-risk NSTEACS who are not planned to undergo an early invasive strategy and do not carry a high bleeding risk. Fortunately, treatment with potent P2Y12 receptor inhibitors Ticagrelor or prosugrel exhibits a fast onset of action, thereby allowing loading dose administration after diagnostic coronary angiography and before PCI. Question 3. Should this patient receive a glycoprotein, GP, 2B-3 antagonist upstream or during the PCI procedure? No. Treatment with GP2B-3 antagonists in patients in whom coronary anatomy is not known is not recommended and GP2B-3 antagonists should only be considered for bailout reasons if there is, for example, evidence of no reflow or a thrombotic complication during PCI, section 5.1.2. Question 4. A 56-year-old male patient with a history of recent intracranial hemorrhage and severe arterial hypertension, 
systolic blood pressure greater than 200 mmHg, is admitted to the emergency department. He suffers from typical chest pain and the initial high-sensitivity cardiac troponin, HSCTN, is markedly elevated, greater than 5 upper limit of normal ULN. Coronary angiography reveals single vessel disease with a stenosis of the medial right coronary artery, RCA. PCI is performed successfully. What are the options for P2Y12 inhibitor treatment for this patient? The only optional treatment is clopidogrel, 600 mg loading dose. 75 mg daily dose for this patient. Of note, both potent P2Y12 receptor inhibitors prosugrel and ticagrelor are contraindicated in patients with a history of intracranial hemorrhage, figure 7, table 7. Question 5. What is the recommended treatment duration for dual antiplatelet therapy, DAPT? with aspirin and clopidogrel in this patient. The recommended treatment duration for dual antiplatelet therapy is 12 months unless there are contraindications or an excessive risk of bleeding. Indeed, the bleeding risk is high in this patient, for example precise DAPT greater than or equal to 25 or ARCHBR, Academic Research Consortium High Bleeding Risk, Criteria Met, and Discontinuation of P2Y12 Inhibitor Therapy After 3 Months Should Be Considered, Figure 7, Table 7. Question 6. A 42-year-old male patient with diabetes, multivessel coronary artery disease, CAD, and a history of myocardial infarction, MI, with PCI of the proximal left anterior descending, LAD, coronary artery 13 months ago presents at an outpatient clinic for a routine follow-up. He has been on aspirin monotherapy for three weeks after having stopped a dual antiplatelet therapy regimen with aspirin and ticagrelor after 12 months post-MI. What antithrombotic treatment should be recommended? This patient is at high risk for future ischemic events including reinfarctions. Adding a second antithrombotic agent to aspirin for extended long-term secondary prevention should be considered, given the lack of increased risk of major or life-threatening bleeding. Treatment options include a dual antithrombotic therapy, DAT, regimen with aspirin and rivaroxaban, 2.5 mg twice daily, BID, or a dual antiplatelet therapy regimen with aspirin and ticagrelor, 60 mg BID, prosugrel, 5 or 10 mg once daily, OD, or clopidogrel, 75 mg OD, figure 7. Table 10. Question 7. What is the recommended periinterventional anticoagulant treatment for patients undergoing PCI? Any periinterventional treatment for NSTEACS patients consists of anticoagulation to inhibit thrombin generation. Anticoagulation, usually administered intravenously, is recommended for all patients during invasive management such as PCI for NSTEACS. Unfractionated heparin is the standard of care for NSTEACS due to its favorable risk-benefit profile. Alternative drugs include bivalirudin and anoxaparin, Figure 7, Table 8. Question 8. A NSTEACS patient with a known history of heparin-induced thrombocytopenia is scheduled for PCI. What is the anticoagulant of choice? 
Unfractionated heparin is contraindicated and bivalirudin would be the anticoagulant of choice during PCI. Bivalirudin dosing is as follows. 0.75 mg per kilogram IV bolus followed by IV infusion of 1.75 mg slash kg slash h for up to 4 h after the procedure as clinically warranted. Table 8. Question 9. A 49-year-old male patient with a body mass index of 22 kg per square meter and arterial hypertension presents to the emergency department with typical chest pain. He has not suffered any previous ischemic events. The electrocardiogram, ECG, indicates ST depression and high-sensitivity cardiac troponin is 51 nanograms per liter and 151 nanograms per liter. The upper limit of normal, ULN is 14 nanograms per liter, at admission and 1H time points. Coronary angiography reveals two-vessel disease with a culprit lesion in the mid-LAD. He is then scheduled for ad hoc PCI of the remaining diseased vessel. What P2Y12 inhibitor should be given to this patient along with the procedure and for the months thereafter? A P2Y12 receptor inhibitor is recommended in addition to aspirin and maintained over 12 months unless there are contraindications or an excessive risk of bleeding. Among the available potent P2Y12 receptor inhibitors, Ticagrelor and Prosugrel, the third-generation thionopyridine Prosugrel should be preferred over Ticagrelor for NSTEACS patients who proceed to PCI. This recommendation is based on the results of the randomized ISAR REACT-5, intracoronary stenting and antithrombotic regimen, Rapid Early Action for Coronary Treatment, trial where Prosugrel versus Ticagrelor significantly reduced the composite rate of death, MI, or stroke without any increase in bleeding complications, section 5.1.1.2, figure 7. Question 10. Are there any individualized antiplatelet treatment strategies for certain subsets of NSTEACS patients? NSTEACS patients treated with prosugrel or ticagrelor may suffer major or repetitive minor bleeding complications which may negatively impact treatment adherence. Here, de-escalation of P2Y12 receptor inhibitor treatment for example with a switch from prosugrel or ticagrelor to clopidogrel, may be considered as an alternative dual antiplatelet therapy strategy, especially for ACS patients deemed unsuitable for potent platelet inhibition. De-escalation may be done unguided based on clinical judgment or guided by platelet function testing or CYP2C19 genotyping depending on the patient's risk profile and availability of respective assays. The latter options leave room for a more individualized approach for antiplatelet treatment in ACS patients. It must be emphasized that such strategies are optional and should be implemented on a case-by-case -case decision, Section 5.1.4. Thanks for watching.